Okay, in this problem, we're asked to show that there are no points P such that it satisfies our constraint equation, G equals C, and that the gradient vector of G at P is equal to zero. And then after we've shown that, we can use Lagrange multipliers to find critical points of F, where F is given as the function F of X, Y, Z equals 2X minus 3Y plus C. And our constraint equation is g of x is equal to x squared plus 2y squared plus 3z squared. And we're looking at the level set where g is equal to 318. Okay, so first we want to show that there are no points satisfying our constraint and the gradient vector is equal to zero. So we'll take the gradient vector of g, which is right there. So the gradient vector is equal to 2x comma 4y comma 6z. And we want to find points where our gradient vector is equal to zero. So we'll go ahead and set that equal to zero. That tells us that each of the components are equal to zero. And in order for that to be true, then x, y, and z both have, all have to be zero. So we have one point So we have one point where our gradient vector of our constraint is equal to zero. Now we just want to make sure that at that point, or that point is not within our constraint. So we'll go ahead and plug in x, y, and z equal to zero. And we see that the left hand side is zero and the right hand side is equal to 318. So we know that zero does not equal to 318. So that means that there are no points that satisfy our gradient vector equal to zero and our constraint. So now we can use Lagrange multipliers to try and find some critical points of f. So to do that, we'll take the gradient vector of f and set that equal to some constant lambda times the gradient vector of g. So our gradient vector of f is equal to To negative 3, 1, and we'll set that equal to lambda times 2x comma 4y comma 6z. And we want to also satisfy our constraint, which is given here. So we're actually going to have four equations. I'll number this one as a 1. And then two, we're gonna get by setting the x component equal to each other. So we have two is equal to two lambda x. And three Three, our third equation is negative three is equal to four lambda y. And our fourth equation is one is equal to six lambda z. So we can go ahead and solve um, each of these three equations in terms of x, y, and z. And then plug into our first constraint, or our constraint equation to determine what lambda will be, since each of these equations will be um, in terms of lambda. So we have x is equal to 1 over lambda. y is equal to negative 3 over 4 lambda. And z is equal to 1 over 6 lambda. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and plug into our constraint equation and determine what our lambda values are. And then we can use those to determine our x, y, and z, which will give us our critical points of f. So we have
1 over lambda quantity squared plus 2 times the quantity negative 3 over 4 lambda squared plus 3 times the quantity 1 over 6 lambda squared is equal to 318. So the first thing we'll notice is that we have a lambda in the denominator of all three of these. So we're going to have a lambda squared in each of these terms. So we can multiply both sides by lambda squared. And we get one plus two times nine sixteenths plus three times one over thirty six is equal to three hundred and eighteen lambda squared because we're multiplying both sides by lambda squared. We can combine these terms so we get So we get we have a common denominator of 144. So we have 144 over 144 plus 18 times 9 over 40, 144 plus 3 times 4 over 144 is equal to 318 lambda squared. Combine these terms, we get. Three eighteen over one forty four is equal to three eighteen lambda squared. Lambda squared is equal to one over one forty four, or lambda is equal to plus or minus one twelfth. Okay, so now we know that. Now we know our lambda value. So if we let lambda equal one twelfth, we have x is equal to 12. y is equal to negative 9. And z is equal to 2. So we have one point, one critical point. when lambda is equal to 1 12th, and then when lambda is equal to negative 1 12th, we just get the negative of our points. So we have a critical point at 12, 9, negative 9, 2, and a critical point at negative 12, 9, negative 2. And so we'll determine what our function is at those points. So we have 53. and negative 53. So we have a um, local maximum 
and minimum at 12, negative 9, 2, and negative 12, 9, negative 2. And our value of f is 53 and negative 53. So we can see that our constraint is a, um, a spheroid, and we have our function is a plane. So we can imagine our function kind of cross-cutting this sphere. And at the point, at the point 12, negative 9, 2, we have a tangent plane to our sphere. And at the point negative 12, 9, negative 2, we also have a tangent. So you can imagine that in between those points, you would have circular regions of, along, along the boundary where our tangent plane is equal to the sphere. So these are our critical points, and we use Lagrange multipliers to determine them.